fought nobody like me. He's never fought nobody like me. He's going to know real quick in this fight that he's not in with no welterweight. He's in with someone who's got venom in his hands. You know, every, everybody he's fought, you know, you know, I would, I, I would be, you know. So I'm going in this fight, you know, smiling, you know. This, this, he's just a man with two arms and two legs, you know, uh, and like I said, I'm a shot of the world in this fight. In the realm of professional boxing, much like the thrilling world of action movies, fighters often fall into two categories. Some chose the hero's mantle, while others relish playing the antagonist, sporting the villain's mask. While fans may passionately argue that sportsmanship should be grounded in respect alone, the truth is that bouts modeled after the first scenario tend to capture the audience's attention the most. This was exactly the case in the autumn of 2016, when Jenedy Golovkin, the undisputed middleweight champion, squared off against a brash British upstart named Kell Brook. True to the makings of a great action flick, this fight was spectacular, complete with a dramatic finale. And in this feature, we will take an in-depth look at this riveting clash where the legendary fighter from Kazakhstan put the young challenger in his place. Meet Kell Brook, one of the most gifted middleweight boxers, a former IBF world champion and a shining star in the boxing world. This British pugilist was once predicted to triumph over the then reigning Titan Genedy Golovkin. Possessing extraordinary talent, Brook held an impressive record of 36 victories, 25 won by knockout, without a single defeat before facing the formidable boxer from Kazakhstan. His prowess in the ring was undeniable. Brook brought paralyzing power in both hands, exquisite speed, and impenetrable defense skills. The complete package. He demonstrated a remarkable ability to absorb punches without faltering, showcasing resilience in every match. The English fighter earned his inaugural welterweight title from the IBF in 2014 by unanimously defeating the well-known American boxer Sean Porter. Subsequent title defenses were marked by a string of early victories, further cementing Brooks' reputation as a dominant force in the boxing realm. At the same time, boxing phenomenon Genady Golovkin was dominating his division, holding four championship belts and methodically dismantling anyone bold enough to challenge his reign. His prowess became so fearsome that fellow boxers started to dodge any prospect of stepping into the ring with this juggernaut a clear case of self-preservation. It was against this backdrop that a daring move was made by a certain welterweight. In a leap of ambition, Kell Brook vaulted up two weight classes to throw down the gauntlet to the Kazakh powerhouse. Boxing analysts were unsurprisingly skeptical of such a move. Considering a match against Golovkin was then deemed an act of sheer boldness, especially for someone from a lower category like Brook. It was tantamount to madness. Yet, the brash British fighter possessed the audacity to challenge Golovkin, an act of valor that the Kazakh warrior acknowledged and accepted with respect, agreeing to what promised to be an epic showdown. Facing odds of four to one against Kelbrook, skeptics cast doubt on the Englishman's chances. However, Brook held a resolute belief in his victory. He confidently assured everyone that GG would not pose any significant hurdle for him. He's going to know real quick in this fight that he's not in with no welterweight. He's in with someone who's got venom in his hands. You know, so I'm going in this fight, you know, smiling. You know, this is just a man with two arms and two legs. You know, uh, and like I said, I'm a shot of the world in this fight. Gennady Golovkin brushed off the sharp jabs thrown his way in the verbal sparring leading up to the big night calmly advising everyone to just wait for the fight evening to unfold. Come September 10th at London's immense O2 Arena, the fighters stepped into the ring under the resounding cheers of the British fans, eager to determine who among them was the strongest. 50 years ago, Emil Griffith facing a middleweight champion in Madison Square Garden, and he won the fight. And Ray Leonard was seen by most as a welterweight when he moved up. Can Kelbrook follow in the footsteps of fighters like Leonard and Griffith? 
The battle commenced with both caution and severity. The rivals weren't liberal with their punches, but each strike was delivered with full force. This was particularly true for Genedy, who, within the first round, managed to land several significant blows on Brooke. To his credit, the Brit countered time and again with precise, albeit less powerful shots. From Triple G. Triple G has set him up, and if he's still on that rope... Body shot, Brooke is in trouble. And Brooke reaches up and hammered him to deliver with a body shot. If he survived in this fight, he has to fight his fight. By Brooke. Left hook brought the crowd alive. Golovkin nodding at him as if to say, oh, he got it. Kill, Kill Brook is not, and he has to now find a way to survive this round. Triple G is continuing to put pressure and he's continuing to make his punches count. Back to Luff, get off a little bit. Just one punch. He's throwing a jab, but one punch at a time, and he's going back towards the rope. He must keep Triple G. Triple G is number one in the sport by talking about stops and landing camps. There's a good uppercut for Brook. There's a mark outside Golovkin's left eye from the, the puncher, a bigger chance. Triple G will have a bigger and a greater chance in exchange. In round one. As the rounds progressed, Kell Brook found his mark on the opponent repeatedly. Visually, it appeared as though Brook was leading on points, hitting more frequently. However, the stark difference lay in the power behind the Kazakhstani's punches. because if he sits there and wait and take a needle one of these on the end of those punches. He has to be thrown by both men. And if he's not first, I don't believe he can take the power in a long fight with Triple G. Well, for better for worse, have the fight with Triple G. Maybe he wants it that way. And they're trading in the center of the ring. And right now, Brook is getting the better of it. to get too comfortable because Triple G is a high percentage knockout punch, but he can't think about, Kill Brook can't think about the power, but he must think about the, the, what, what can happen. As far as knockdown, he must be conscious of that. Lumpkin going to his jab now, round one. Now jabbing, set up the right hand. And the Lumpkin landing is sweeping a right hand across Brook. Brook is doing a nice short counter. Lovkin has not been knocked down in his profession. When Triple G throws one punch or a wild punch, he's great in the counter. He's a better counter puncher when Triple G is coming out of his seat. Excited by the uppercut. Brook getting in some. Lovkin gets in a right hand over the top. But Brook comes back with a fork. Will he buy him some time? where he wears out Triple G to the point where Triple G is in here. Brooke seems to have realized early on that Golovkin wants to put pressure on him, wants to put... Let's not get too brave, but smart enough to fight a smart man fighting. Rather than a knockdown, Golovkin totally in agreement. Now you see Rush because what is urgency? Is urgency because... He see himself getting outboxed and getting hit he never got hit with. And I'm pretty sure his trainer told him that go out there. He's digging to the body with a three-punch combination. Triple G, jab right hand. Brooke was able to keep a lot of the action in the center of the ring where he likes it. Golovkin is Hard right hand by Golovkin. Just misses with the left hook. To now get confidence. If Brooke continue to win rounds here and there and go into a they ground and try to go ahead and establish his, his, his dominance. But not be leery or worry about the jab because he's so confident that he can hit Brook and maybe hurt him. If he had landed it solidly, he could have hurt Golovkin. I think he is hurt. He got hit with a short uppercut just now with a right hand, and, and Brook is now throwing more than where he gets the bad in there. Brook is trying to build the burst of momentum immediately. something, but Golovkin keeps bearing in and putting pressure on Kell Brook here in round three. Struck the swell badly, and Triple G is doing left and a straight right. And Brook comes back aggressively, winning the admiration of the crowd. By the fourth round, the tide started to subtly shift as Golovkin finally got into his stride. 
landing accurate punches with increasing success. Brook had his moments, but the power in his punches seemed to wane. A real fight so far. So, this, the Triple G showing some frustrations because running, boxing, moving, punching, slipping. Every now and then, Brook stayed his corners, continue to tell him, don't be on the ropes. Be in the center of the ring or keep moving left to right. As you see on the ropes, Triple G has a shot when he's on the ropes. Can't face right now. Landing some solid punches. Golovkin taking them so far. Yes, and Brook's face right now is showing the effect of the power. As I suggest, it might be the case. Golovkin placing body shots now. Whether it's coming from the left side or the right side, he has it. Second round. Golovkin sticking a jab. Both fighters' faces are showing damage from the shots they've landed in the first three rounds. Brooke to deliver one more time with the left hand here in the fourth. It looked like, it looked like Triple G is just actually, you know, pushing his punch. It doesn't look like in, in speed, but I mean speed. The power's there, but the speed is not there. It seemed like an arm, they had no snap on. We call them arm punches in box. It's much sharper, much cleaner. Quick, See this look, by Brooke. Those are the kind of punches that Golovkin isn't spot on. During the break between the fourth and fifth rounds, Kell Brook's corner detected something amiss, a substantial hematoma blossoming on the Brit's face, a sign of trouble brewing. With the start of the fifth round, the English team's concerns were realized. Golovkin sensed the vulnerability and kept forging ahead with devastating blows. It was clear to all, the end was nigh, and the boxer from Kazakhstan was poised to deliver the dramatic finale, forcing Brook's corner to throw in the towel. His fiercest rally of the fight And Brooke is putting his hands up like he wasn't hurt, but you know, he might be hurt later, so I think he should stay focused. I think he was hurt a little bit, and let the opponent know that you're not hurt, but that normally means the opposite. He needs himself to get countered like he just did with a straight right, and, and I believe he's hurt with this, and now Triple G is going to keep him there. Play through the fifth round. Golovkin is now landing body shots again Hit in round number one. And yes, he is. He's pop shotting right now. That you see him. Dominic, Dominic in the far corner is holding up a towel. Engel is trying to get referee Marlon Wright to stop the fight, and now he finally throws the towel. He's going to have a technical knockout victory in round number five. Following the battle, the somber suspicions of boxing fans were confirmed. Kelbrook suffered a severe orbital fracture, and it's sobering to think that, had his team not halted the fight in time, the outcome could have been far more tragic. Nonetheless, credit must be given to Brooke, who despite facing an opponent with a significant advantage in strength, not only stepped into the ring, but also put up a commendable fight. After the match, Golovkin remarked that he didn't feel a single punch from his rival. Gennady, Gennadyovich, Golovkin, a 